Welcome back. We finished chapter three, so let's head off into chapter four. We, we will have quite a few things to talk about in future. Oh, yes. Norship province, northern area, skies above the Isengard range. So near you, Mir. Imperial family's highest speed cruiser. Courageous. It's just meant to look like suspicious or something. It's just like it seems very much like pretty much the same as the branch campus, to be honest. Yes, Hugo. Very much look looking like a member of Team Rocket there. Count our sage, yes, yes. Wonder if he knows. We are now over the western part of the Isengard mountain range. What's going on with Laura is what I was going to say. Estimated arrival in Heimdall is 1410. Maintain current course and speed. Once we reach Ulster, adjust course to run parallel to the railroad. Aye, aye, Captain. You have my thanks, Your Grace. Your assistance this past week has been invaluable. Think nothing of it. This is the Crimson Wing's job, after all. I've no doubt your first bout of field exercises in North Ambria saw you even busier than I. It is I who should be thanking you for your hard work. To be honest, I'm having a difficult time deciding how to proceed as a teacher. <laughs> Perhaps that is a sign of General Craig's influence. I would advise you to follow your own convictions for the time being. That way, you may... Ah, instructor. There you are. Ugh. Cadet Arner. Greetings, my lord. Seeing it up close, the Courageous is truly amazing. And though it was barely used during the Civil War, its main cannon is certainly impressive as well. Perhaps we should consider deploying a number of cruisers to match our fleet of battleships. Cadet. It is true that during an emergency, such power may prove beneficial. Learning when to use one's power and when to refrain is an important lesson. If that is the lesson your field exercises have taught you, then I'd say it is safe to declare them a success. Yes, of course. Of course. My thanks, Captain Arsade. I look forward to seeing you again. I wish you luck patrolling the Summer Festival alongside my older brother. Suspicious. Nice to see the trams are still running. Something I was worried about. There's the Bifrost. Rainbow Road. That's a bridge, actually, isn't it? Roads Mario.
Uh, yes, here are the catacombs. Alright then. Damn it! How many times have they slipped away like that now? There's no end to it! We need help from the Intelligence Division or the RMP. Man, it'd be nice if all we had to deal with are those half-wits. But we can't afford to let our guard down. Spread out and lay low until the appointed time. Be sure you've got your Ramdas ready to use. Roger. Recommencing mission. Red flowers? That's not a good sign. I don't think so. It's a Nosferatu. No end to them. <laughs> the eyes which served as the vessel for the bringer of miracles. But when the flame consumed the mirage, the fairy tale became that of the Empire. So as a professional, how do you intend to intervene? Oh, was I that obvious? Thomas. To be perfectly honest, I'm having a bit of trouble finding a lead. Starting to think about like some of my ideas that I had previously with the Divine Knights. I'm thinking about like what Vita was up to in Cold Steel 2 now as well. I wonder if that connects somehow. I was hoping we could work together as friends and colleagues and have ourselves a little information exchange. I could even help you bury the hatchet with the elder of your clan, perhaps? <laughs> That's right. You have an agreement with her, don't you? Well, I'll consider your offer. However, I ask that you play nice from now on, Mr. Former History Instructor. It's a hell of a title. Or should I say, Second Dominion Thomas Lysander the Partitioner. I prefer the first one. I so want to get to the theory part. I want to talk about my theory. Oh, it's exciting. Because even if I'm wrong, it's still fun. Well, Flame Palace. So the Inferno Castle relates to what I've got to talk about with the homunculi as well. We'll get there. Valhalla Plains, as as Miller's Garden, as Miller's. It's quite fancy, isn't it? My current thoughts are going through my head in case you're wondering right now. I'm trying to think of like why or Ross is doing the experiments. So what happens when we see scenes like this, my mind starts to race with other ideas. Priscilla. I would not have expected that Olivert would be missing the party like this. It is unfortunate, yet understandable, given the current situation. With the Crimson Wings safeguarding Heimdall's skies, I'm sure the citizens will feel at ease. 
Yes, but I can't help but feel bad for him. I wonder if he's been upset over Cedric's actions of late. Hmm. Oliver isn't the type to let that get to him. You should know this as well as I. <laughs> no, you're right. He was only a young boy when he lost his mother and was adopted into the royal family. I would have understood if he hadn't accepted me, given his early life. But he gladly welcomed me as his stepmother and was truly happy when Alfin and Cedric were born. <laughs> yes, that is the virtue he possesses. It's easy to believe he has friends not simply across Erebonia, but the entire continent. Yes. However, recently, even though Cedric once looked up to his older brother, he... Pardon me, Your Highness. Chancellor Osborne would like an audience. Very well. Send him in. He looks thinner. Healthier. My apologies for interrupting, my liege. You as well, Lady Priscilla. No. <laughs> it's quite all right. I shall excuse myself now. She seems to have some worries about the prince. It is to be expected. So long as she sees things differently from you. Understood. In any event, it seems things are beginning to line up with what was written in the records. Yes, though we set the timing for the Civil War ourselves. Mm -hmm. By this point, however, the ending is all but decided. But are you certain this is all right? Leaving everything in my hands? As I told you 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. If there truly is no other way to avoid this end, then I shall leave it all to you. It may place a great burden on my sons, but could not the same be said of you? Yes, my liege. Mm, things are not as simple with Osborne as we thought. I mean, they weren't simple anyway, but, y y you know, it's like there's, there's even more going on here. Hmm. Chapter 4. Radiant Heimdall. Intriguing. I so want to get to the theory part. Got a long time before we get there. It's a couple of days later, everyone. More than a couple. With July, summer was in full swing in leaves. However, with Thor's move back toward being a traditional military academy, no summer uniforms were given out. Students of the main and branch campuses were only allowed to remove their inner lining from their normal uniforms. Why? Seems silly. As students across both campuses were wilting under the sun's harsh rays, a certain event was about to take place that would bring them all together. Ooh. Now loading. Fourth period. Erebonian history. Up till now, We've covered an overview of the time period from the Great Collapse to the modern era. But starting this week, 
we'll be taking a more in-depth look at certain key individuals. We'll start with Dracul's Rize Arnor, father of the Imperial Renaissance. I mean, and he got good handwriting with chalk there. 250 years ago, he brought the War of the Lands to a close, ushering us into the modern era. Though he was born as the third prince of Emperor Valius V, he was born out of wedlock, and ended up abdicating his status and wandering the Empire. He found himself at the edge of the Empire, the Nord Highlands. There, he was welcomed by the nomadic tribes and spent a few days with them. Meanwhile, the Empire's mainland had been plunged into a bloody civil war. Originally, he had no interest in the throne. Once he saw that the toll of war was taking on his country, he decided to put an end to it. He started with only 17 followers, 16 Nord warriors, who decided to join him and his confidant, the Knight Roland. Half a year later, though, Prince Dracolus would have a fateful encounter in the southeast of the Empire, Rugla, the daughter of a count and leader of the Eisenritter, Leanne Sandlot, the hero of what is known as the Lance Maiden. I, I have a question. Isn't she still alive? Was that person you and the other instructors fought the real Saint Leanne? How could she be alive? Yeah, I've been wondering the same thing. Saint Leanne is a legendary knight. There's no way it's actually her, but I heard the fight was intense. Well, instructor? Without a doubt, she was tremendously strong, and that aura of hers certainly seemed real. But it's possible one of Ouroboros's members is just posing as her. Or it's something to do with the Divine Knights that we don't know about, Reen. Let's put that aside for now, though. Stingy! Stingy! By the way, 254 years ago today, on July 4th, the War of the Lions came to an end. Now keep in mind, the test will cover the events from just before to just after the War of the Lions. Let's so make sure to review that time period thoroughly. July 4th, Traitor's Day. I hate to admit it, but he really is good at teaching. Now how, how dare the instructor be good at teaching? Well, to be fair, he himself was a student just last year. I heard his grades were pretty high too. <laughs> he looks great in glasses too. Oh god. Home room. Yes. Where was Kurt looking? Anyway, our four days of midterms will begin tomorrow. General studies, military science, arts, information processing, combat technique. There'll be a lot to cover, so good luck. Phew, you rattled those off all like it'll be easy. No way all that is going to be easy. I suppose we'll simply have to trust in everything we've learned thus far. By the by, little birdie told me that the contents of our exams and the schedule will match that of the main campus. Wonder, will our grades be posted alongside theirs? Rivalry. That's right. Both individual scores and class averages will be posted at both campuses. So it should be worth your time to study, wouldn't you agree? It's so blatant. So you're going to make us compete? Yep. And our little crown prince is going to be handed first place on a silver platter, yeah? No, and that's going to hit his ego. That's... I can totally see that happening. No, that won't happen. In the past, Thor's was split up into nobles and commoners, but grading has always been done fairly. Instructors I know at the main campus wouldn't let grades be tampered with like that. So at the very least, the exams will be a level playing field. Hmm, if you say so. That's gonna be the that's gonna cause a spark, isn't it? He's not gonna do the best, and these guys are gonna do better than him. And it's gonna cause him to snap. There'll also be a little reward waiting for you guys once the exams are over. You'll have three days this weekend to look forward to. So give the exams your all. I'll be giving you the giving. I'll be giving the exams for Erebonian history and combat technique. So please ask me anything you're confused about before tomorrow. Ding ding. 
All preparations for the exams have been completed. Grades will be posted alongside the main campuses, but I don't expect there to be problems. I do. Our curriculum should be in sync, thanks to the Orbal Net. It's great that we're able to work with the main campus's instructors to come up with exam questions. And all that's left is for the students themselves to show us what they've got. Jaeger Corps have been confirmed retreating from the Empire since last month's field exercises. And according to the intelligence agency, it would appear the society is withdrawn as well. I see. Well, if that's true, it's great news, but... Maybe we can stop being fully clenched all the time now? We cannot let our guards down completely. But for the time being, we can at least allow them to just be students. Take care not to disclose any information regarding exam questions. But feel free to clarify any questions the students have. Be a simple guiding hand in their studies. Looks like big bad Mr. Michael has really toned it down. <laughs> he's always been very serious and responsible. It seems like he's been thinking with the students in mind recently. Let's do our best to be as much help to the students as we can today. Right. Still got some time before the school closes for the day. Well then, let's split up, gang. Indubitably. His glasses are off, it's weird. The exams will be held over the next four days. And this Saturday is a free day. The location for our next field exercises will be announced, too. So it's going to be a busy few days. Put your glasses back on, it's weird now. Looks like everyone's working together to brush up on their weak subjects. Guess I'll make my rounds and talk to any student. Who would look like they're having a tough time. Not a side. It's not what I was wearing. A robber lost in the black workshop. I wonder if the principal and the professor know anything about them. Today is a free day before the exam. Talk to specific characters today to trigger study events. The main story will progress after you've seen all the key events and used up all of your studying points. Have studying points? Studying points? Studying points? Studying points? Alright. Just make sure I've got all that there. Alright, so just making sure there. Um, let's see here. Let's, uh, 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 black records. Black records. Black records number five. Right. Ah! This is something I wanted to think about as well, because it was mentioned previously, so... The Salt Pale, year 1178. On July 1st, 1178, at 5.45am, a great catastrophe struck North Ambria, then a principality in northern Zumeria. A giant white pillar suddenly appeared on the outskirts, outskirts, outskirts of its capital, Haliask. The pillar was composed not of snow nor ice, but salt. As such, it was named the Salt Pale. Mm -hmm. A storm of salt spread outward from it, salinif salinifying, salinifying everything it touched, making it salty. Despite, our, mm, despite only lasting a few days, its effects were felt for months afterward as citizens fled south, seeking refuge. In the immediate aftermath of the catastrophe, the number of victims equaled about one-eighth of the country's population. That number rose to nearly a third of the population, with the inclusion of victims in the days that followed. After the incident, the Septian Church led evacuation procedures, provided aid, and employed hundreds from the Bracer Guild to help. In a short time, relief forces from Erevonia, Remiferia, Uri, Liberal, and the Republic of Calvod had assembled in Northumbria. Meanwhile, the country's leader, Prince Balmond, who had fled to a neighbouring country at the start of the catastrophe, had returned to rebuild the government. However, he was met with violence from the enraged citizens for leaving them behind in their hour of need. In the end, he was forcibly removed from power, and North Ambria became a democracy. The remnants of its former armed forces reformed as the Northern Jaegers. 
Adabonia, their neighbour to the south, had contradictory views on the new autonomous state. On one hand, it refused to recognise the legitimacy of the new de democratic government. On the other, it eagerly welcomed the Northern Jaegers. North Ambia's extreme poverty and focus on bringing in foreign currency meant that the former soldiers were easily manipulated by the promise of imperial coin. The Jaeger Corps went around the empire, hiring themselves out to the nobility and newly developing businesses who were fighting over septium and natural resources. They turned out to be the perfect pawns for Erebonia to use in its proxy wars and internal struggles. Despite this, the massive amounts of mirror that flowed in from the empire helped save North Ambria from its dire straits. 27 years after the catastrophe of the Salt Pale, the Empire annexed North Ambria as reparations for the Northern Jaegers' actions in the Erebonian Civil War. As before, Erebonia's vast resources ended up lifting the former independent state out of its chronic poverty. Shortly after the disaster, the Septian Church restricted access to the northern half of the country. After the annexation, however, the Imperial Army's Intelligence Division began investigating the Pale, which had since been classified as an otherworldly singularity. Hmm. Hmm. Otherworldly singularity. That's the singularity thing. That's not really something you hear in this. So is it like a doorway? Just trying to think how, how would singularity apply here for them? Hmm. Because we know there's an other side. So I'm wondering if that's a way to or a connection to this other side. Hmm. Anyway, one of the intelligence division's collaborators, like, like, collaborators, yep, yep, has been able to confirm that members of the church's dominion retrieved the salt pail and brought it back to Arteria. It's rumored, however, that a piece of the pail still remains on site in North Ambria. Intriguing. Because it doesn't sound like a Septarian or anything like that, so... Hmm... Sounds very different. So anyway, Elisa. Come on, Elisa. You know... How to put this without sounding silly. Thank you for such a nice present. It's such a beautiful and elegant design that I didn't even realize it was a pinky ring at first. But it was an engagement ring, which would have been fine by me, really. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> Thanks a ton, Reen. I'll be sure to show it off on a special occasion. Damn, she really threw me off for a second. Eh, whatever. Just glad she likes it. From Sharon, what a bold boy you are. Send like a woman perfume, Masterine. My, you ever bold. And I happen to love the smell of roses. I'll be certain to wear this the next time I see you. I will, of course, be keeping this a secret from Lady Elisa. As should you. Maybe I... Pushed it if it's a gift we have to keep secret. Oh, she clearly likes it. That's all that matters. It's not. Mango! It works great! I used the antique coffee grinder. You sent me right away. It grinds dirt very well. In a word, it's incredible. There's this age profound flavor I've gotten with it. It's like it's been like I've been sent back in time. I cup in the morning with it, and I'm good to work for the rest of the day. Come visit the Oss district when I'm home. I'll brew you a cup. Now you're alright, mate. I was just getting rid of it because I didn't want it. It's like, yeah, I'm glad you like it, but I don't want any of that. <laughs> I knew a coffee connoisseur like him would appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to that cup so I can smash it around the wall. Elise, thanks to you. I tried that pure white soap you sent me, and the results were wonderful. Using it makes me feel as moisturized as when I bathed in the hot springs at home. <laughs> I'd let you see for yourself if I could. Perhaps I'll have enough set aside for our next hot springs visit. Am I? I'm sure about that. Good enough that we shouldn't really be bathing together anymore. Besides, so it's already making use of the soap, at least. Princess Alphen, it tasted divine. The eastern tea you sent me was just delicious, Serene. Ah, oh, yes, well, it would be, of course. I did have a difficult time bringing out its true essence, mind. Eastern and Western teas are prepared very differently, I've come to learn. Indeed, indeed. I think you would much be better. You, you would be much better at it. I'd love it if you could teach me your ways. Oh my. Oh well, yeah, I think about that when I gave it. Didn't think about that when I gave it to her. I like the idea of teaching her how to prepare it, though. 
Yes, yes indeed. Right, so let's end this part here. In the next part, we'll wander around and use up our study points. Yeah. See you in the next part. Cut off for now. <laughs>